Hi, I'm Joe Jacobson at Wickham Wanderers, and you're listening to Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to this week's edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show. Lots to bring you in the next hour, as you'd expect, including uh, a roundup of uh, what happened at Adams Park on Tuesday night with Phil. We'll look ahead to the visit of Shrewsbury on Saturday as well, uh, including a very special celebration. Happy anniversary to us. <laughs> Yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, uh, we'll hear from the manager, Matt Bloomfield, as well, uh, a couple of times, uh, post-Tuesday and pre-Saturday. Uh, that's all on the way in the next hour as well. But that's not all. Is it not? <laughs> oh, yes, it is. I was going to say, nearly panto Sorry. Season, but, but not quite. Uh, and they're up to Christmas. This is a joke I did earlier. Uh, it's, it's great to have a, a carol on the show. Hey. And uh, Jesus as well. Ah. Um, <laughs> uh, Dave Carroll will be joining us in a bit. Ah. Very much looking forward to chatting to him. He was at the Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association annual dinner, which I believe was... Was it last week? No. Week before. I don't Recently, know. anyway. I have no idea what day it is. I know. You're the time's going so person. quick, isn't it? If you're listening on the podcast a while back. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and we'll be catching up with Gemma Dunn as well. He's a Wickham Wanderers women centre-back. They had their media day yesterday. They didn't they? They did. There's a very nice uh, team photo. Yes. That's, that's on, on social media. It's very good. It's nice to see them all together. It is nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they, they, they're all together a lot. But well, they're all together I, I now. Know what you mean, but you know what I mean. Yes. Yeah, training now, I think. Uh, yes, in the rain. Lucky them. Ooh, the rain in Burnham. Yeah. Uh, yes, anyway. Uh, much, to <laughs> much to bring you and possibly other bits. Have you got other, have you got other bits? Oh, there's always other bits, Definitely Colin. other bits. Yeah, there's always other bits. But first then, uh, let's bring you a chat with Phil, uh, including uh, starting with uh, Jack Grimmer, of course, who you might have heard on Ringing the Blues earlier this week. And uh, he spoke after the game on Saturday very passionately as well. Yeah, yeah. It's um, What was really interesting, actually, was the response from the fans. It's sort of resolutely positive about, about Jack's approach um, as a senior player. I think, you know, he's been here sort of over four years now. But, you know, at 29, he's probably sort of in that general's category now at Wickham, and rightly so. And, you know, just to kind of shine some light again onto that a bit it was something that he wanted to do and um and was like yeah I need to speak and you know on behalf of the players um and that takes real character I think and and I think we all suspected that that character's been there with Jack the whole time in fact tonight has been but yeah it was um interesting the response um certainly um even fans from other clubs saying you know wow this is um this is a bit different um so yeah we do like to do things a bit differently here um obviously it's born about from a, a situation that, that's not ideal but that's football you know results uh, can't always go your way and things can't always go your way and there'll always be a uh, a cycle in football and, and ups and downs and um i think as i said to the gaffer uh, after after that sh- um defeat against Morecambe is you do learn a lot about people in these times um, and I'm sure he's been learning a lot as well and, and Jack too because um, let's not forget there's a lot of new faces around No absolutely and to quote a, a fan and former club employee and German comedy ambassador uh, Henning Vane uh, on social media wrote great interview but why are the players and managers expected to apologise to the fans after every defeat usually followed by how many miles the round trip is it's sport sometimes you win sometimes you lose but irrespective of the win or lose you're spending time with your mates which is a really good point isn't it I think it is a really good point and again as someone who's over 40 I remember what it's like when social media wasn't around and I've also remembered times when Wickham have been on poor runs uh, much worse ones than this uh, and we've all sort of on the final whistle and, and moaned and gone to the pub or wherever and, and, and sat in our collective social groups and, and moaned and probably done the sort of things that we would now be seeing on Twitter that we now see on Twitter so I understand people's frustrations certainly in the heat of a game straight after the game and you know when I was a kid I didn't have that facility and I'm quite glad actually uh, so, um, but you know people want to vent and, and stuff online and that's fine that's that, that's that's how, that's how it should be if people want to do that but it's just something that's that's new and it has sort of engendered this culture of sort of almost entitlement and let's not forget you know, there's 24 teams in league one two will get promoted automatically one will go up through the playoffs three will be unsuccessful in those playoffs and and that's still the same but there's 24 t- sets of fans there who who believe they should be in those top two and that's what football's all about as well but not everybody can be and you know yes we've had our share of success down the, down the last few years and that's not to say we won't again this year but um, yeah it's sometimes someone like Henning sort of socially comments uh, in, in a way that kind of does make you think differently and you think well actually yeah I've just spent Saturday going up and or Tuesday night for example going to Barnsley and seeing my team lose but I've spent the vast majority of my time with my friends or doing 
something that I believe in and I love and and support goes both ways as well support isn't just about being at Wembley when we win or not or watching on TV as it was back when we did win it's about being there when your players aren't delivering to the standard they they usually are or below what what you expect of them and supporting them and as long as they continue to put the effort in and deserve that support that's how it should be and also the timing of the Q&A with the chairman before Tuesday night's game seems to come at a really good time as well and some of his comments really helped I think yeah I mean Rob is um is a guy that's never shy um and, ha- and never has been and um again people seem to think that's quite unusual in the English game and I think that's been something that um that certainly the, the growing number of Americans in terms of ownership have perhaps bought uh, not all of them but um, I think a few Man United fans may disagree with this but Rob has um been very open and very accessible and um he comes over once a month. He was always due to come over regardless of results. And and he always sort of messages in the week leading up to it saying, oh, you know, how do we engage with the fans? You know, and, and it was his idea to do it on the, on the Tuesday night. I think perhaps crudely to maybe add a few tickets onto what was always going to be a, a poorly attended game. You know, we were able to broadcast it as well to make it accessible for everybody and, and people to see back again afterwards. But, you know, you look at some of the stuff that's online in the build-up to stuff, uh, like that and uh, we don't get the sort of questions that are posted online which I think is a shame and I think Rob was a little disappointed because I think um, as someone who spends a lot of time sort of talking in court and, and, and having a, and being scrutinised on the stand so to speak he quite enjoys it and uh, yeah <laughs> but it was interesting either way and, and obviously it gives fans a chance to, to see where Rob's coming from and, and to dissect and go over what he says and, and discuss with their friends as well but yeah it's it's just another opportunity I guess for some for some contact with those running the club and something that Jack pointed out in his, his post-match interview on Saturday that he was really looking forward to the opportunity on Tuesday to sort of put things right and, and that came to fruition yeah, it's a much maligned competition, as we've said many times on this show, Colin. But let's look at the teams that are in League One that are still progressing in, in League Two as well. It seems that, that, that those teams are taking it more seriously. I've noticed a huge step up in quality or, or competitiveness, I think. Quality is probably the wrong word because I think the technical quality has always been there with the under-21 teams. What's been lacking is their sort of competitiveness in terms of the physicality uh, of men's football. And I think that's why they've been brought into this competition. Uh, that's been a steep sort of upward curve, I I think over the last four or five years and uh, and we saw Fulham um, you know playing some really good football but also being able to mix it a bit more physically which meant that it was a it was a really good game to watch actually very entertaining to watch and the right result for Wickham but from a Wickham point of view minutes for players you know David Wheeler after getting a knock at Barnsley um, was able to we had to miss the FA Cup game but was able to get a full 90 plus on Tuesday night Jack Grimmer Joe Jacobson uh, Luke Lee here returned for him as well and that was a sort of a lot of people sort of scrutinising that of course because of you know how would he react when he crosses the white line what about that first 50-50 and he passed that test with flying colours and, and, and got some good assists for his great mate Dale Taylor as well so yeah but you know a really positive night and you know not just for progression in the cup but just for what it means for the team on Saturday and it has to be used as a springboard Colin first and foremost for the league and you know no better time to do that than on Saturday Adams Park against Shrewsbury and, and that's what we spoke about with the gaffer after the game Really pleased with the performance tonight. Um, I thought we could have had a few more goals. Um, slightly uh, disappointed. We kind of lost a little bit of discipline near the end. But uh, in many ways, I think considering what's happened in the last um, couple of weeks and you know, you get close to that win, maybe uh, just plays on the boys' mind slightly. But yeah, it's great to have a few more voices on the pitch. So, you know, Having Lukey back was great. JJ, Jack Grimmer um, with Keezy at the back, I thought... I thought they were very, very good and, and Wills and, and Dale up front I thought were great as well. So um, I said to the players before the game, you know, give me some uh, selection headaches before the weekend. Their shirt's up for grabs for sure. And I thought, you know, a few of them did that tonight. Bit of disruption before the game as well. Uh, Lyle Taylor feeling something, having to drop out of, of, uh, of the lineup. Uh, what was your thoughts on that? Because obviously the injury list is long already. Yeah, it's, uh, it's frustrating um, for Lyle um, and for us because, yeah, it obviously c- coming so close to kick-off, we were ready to um, give the last-minute team talk and, and he had to pull out, so we had to make a last-minute change and bring Dale in. And it's funny how it works, isn't it? Because Dale wasn't due to start and then he got, got his goals. Uh, football works in mysterious ways at times. But, yeah, so we need to assess him, see where he's at. But, you know, Lyle's been great since he's come in. He really wants to do well for us and, and we'll see how quickly that can settle down. Uh, Luke Lee, he got the assist, but also to see him out on the pitch again and, and playing just like the Luke Lee that we know must be a big relief. Yeah, huge. First and foremost, just to have him back out playing, you know, because 
you know, it was a big whack that he took and he's been, you know, I, I've said it several times, and I'll say it again, Luke, he's been unbelievable for us this season in terms of his on the pitch, um, his ability, the way, you know, his forward passes, his assists, his goals, off the pitch, he's just, you know, his character's just top. He's such a good guy. He's always got energy, always trying to wind someone up or play a prank or, you know, he's just just a good guy, one of life's good guys and um, he's one of the people that you really want to see do well and it's great to have him back um, ahead of the game at the weekend. It's lovely for him to get some minutes um, because he's very, very important for us. And also a great night, of course, for, for Dale Taylor, who I guess would have expected to be playing in the role that he did. Yeah, I think he was starting the night on the bench as a sub um, with Lyle Taylor getting more minutes. Turns out, unfortunately, Lyle picked up a knock in the warm-up. So then there was a very late change. And that's the other beauty of doing a live Q&A with your chairman in the build-up to the game is I learned that as the game kicked off. <laughs> so, yeah, having read the team out and uh, Lyle Taylor, and then I saw his blonde hair is now there. What's going on? Uh, and then quickly got my head around that. But then obviously it became very apparent when Dale scored. And, uh, and did really well. First goal was fantastic. Second goal was a really deft finish as well. Two diff- very different kinds of goals. But yeah, the, the strikers, that's what you want, isn't it? Game times, minutes and goals. And I, I, I listened back to the interview that we did in pre-season and I said, Dale, what can we expect from you? And he said, goals. And yeah, it's five now for the season. He'll want more. Of course he does. The fans want him to score more. Of course they will. Hopefully he will. And uh, hopefully it can continue on Saturday as well. And, and, and also hopefully Lyle Taylor isn't, isn't a serious knock and we can get him back out there uh, and getting Matt Sharp and, and getting his undoubted quality contributing to the cause too but yeah I mean there's a lot of tailors around and we spoke to one of the tailors Dale after the game two goals for myself was obviously was obviously massive for me having scored in a whale and to get off a mark again was brilliant and no big credit to the lads going out the day and, and putting the fade in the gallery and got the win two well taken goals as well talk us through that first one yeah just seen it drop and I thought here why not hit it in the volley and thankfully it went in and then the second one luckily he slipped me in and I just got a touch to it and Thankfully, it went in as well. And how about the overall team performance tonight as well? Some good stuff played out there. Yeah, it's good to have some of the lads back, like Luke Leahy and JJ and stuff. And no, I thought the boys played really well and put the fade in and got the three points and on the next round. It's in the Bristol Street Motors Trophy, but I think the club needed a win off the, off the recent form, no matter what the competition. So how does the dressing room after that 90 minutes tonight? Yeah, everyone's buzzing in there, but um, obviously with a game coming Saturday and hopefully we can go out and get another win. Um, I think we owe that to the manager and to the fans, but yeah, hopefully on Saturday we we'll, we'll get another one. And tonight as well, you got your two goals, but at the start of the evening, you were, I think you were due to be on the bench and then there was a, a, a late change was there and then back on. So, in, you know, how does that work out mentally for you? Because obviously you prepare not to be starting, then you are, but then you score two goals. Yeah, well, it's a bit different for me. I prepare to, to start every single game, even if I'm not starting. And yeah, Lyle Le- dropped out. I'm not, I'm not too sure what, what happened to him, but um, no, I was ready to go in and got the two goals and thankfully we got the win. Uh, you've mentioned that Luke Lee, he was back out there. Uh, we've heard Luke's impression of you. What's your opinion of Luke's uh, uh, vocal skills? No, he, he's not bad at it, to be fair. I think he's the, he's the best in, out, of the, out of the group that can do it. Like, um, so, no, it's, it's a good laugh, to be fair. And more importantly, to see him back out there as well after such a serious injury. Great to see him, his, uh, his usual self on the pitch as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy for him, to be fair. I'm, I'm, I'm close with Luke, so I am. And, no, it was brilliant to see him out there and he, he put in a good performance for the team. And something which also came across on the, on the commentary as well was, and you touched on earlier, earlier was you know players in different positions. And, and Toby mentioned it was good to see David Wheeler as well playing playing a bit more forward. Yeah, well, we always talked about his strengths in the air and um, and, and having someone up there that's, that can hang in the air and, and bring other players in, hold the ball up, flick the ball on, and also he's got a good after goal as well. His goal scoring record at Exeter and, and also at Wickham uh, is excellent. Um, so yeah, to have him there and. You know, he's he's always been called, isn't he, the, the Swiss Army knife, and uh, and that's another sort of one of his attachments, I guess, is that he can play up top and lead the line, um, which you know, he did really well the other night. And uh, and if Lyle Taylor is to miss uh, a couple of games, and I'm sure um, we may be seeing him further forward. I know the manager spoke uh, last week about sort of, uh, uh, needing more goals, especially in home games, and I guess that's something that the fans will be looking for this weekend. Yeah, and that's why the stats for the other night were really good because a lot of shots in that game as well, lots of attempts at goal and that seems to be a stark difference from the level of the performances that we've seen in recent times. Um, I think it's, you know, obviously if you don't shoot, you don't score. Um, but you have to work the positions, you have to play well, the performances need to be there as, as the manager said and frankly they haven't been in, um, in recent games in FA Cup and League. So yeah, this is a huge game on Saturday and, and Wickham need to take what they did on Tuesday against Fulham under-21s and, and apply that on the true team that um, 
you know, have had a, a sort of an up and down start to the season as well, and a lot of change in the summer too. Um, similar size club, similar size fan base, so it's a bit of a, I think it's a bit of a benchmark for this division for us, um, and a big game. Does it feel like sort of too much has really been made of this this winless run in League One? I remember uh, under the previous manager, I think there was a seven game winless run as well. But you know, I guess like in in a way, that's all what Henning was intimating at. This is sort of how football goes, isn't it? You get runs where you win, you get wins where you lose. Yeah, it's like I said earlier on, you know, not every team can win every week. Otherwise, it'd be incredibly bring and also physically impossible. Yeah, it's part of football. And as much as we don't want to make excuses or, or look for reasons, there's no coincidence that uh, the, the level of performance has dropped off with the amount of injuries we've had. Um, and that's not to do down the players that are coming in. The players are coming in having to, to get up to match fitness. Perhaps some of them are playing their first sort of decent run in League One in, in their careers and, and, and it's part of their development as well. So, yeah, there's a whole host of reasons. But, you know, I don't think, you know, the excuse culture is, is something that fans enjoy either. Um, and it's about a squad and you build a squad that can deliver and you have to deal with injuries. All clubs will have injuries. Of course they will. but And they will all impact their, their performances and results as well. The clubs with the huge budgets will have the deeper squads in terms of the quality and the experience, more importantly, that goes from top to bottom. Um, and it means that... Um, yeah, that if if those times come, then those 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 um, those things happen. But we've also seen the other side of the coin: teams with huge money and huge budgets. You know, when things are really going well, the manager then has to keep everyone happy because not everybody can play. You know, especially if they're, and they're not having a bad run of injuries. So it's the vagaries of, of football management. Who'd be a football manager? Um, it's a tough old job. But yeah, let's see how we get Saturday. Let's see. You know, with Luke Leahy back, you know, there's like Sam Vokes is, is getting closer. We heard from Kane Vincent Young last Saturday that he'll be back hopefully before Christmas. These are big additions to the squad. You know, Freddie Potts, um, we can put in there as well as a low knee, but somebody's added real quality to our midfield. You know, let's, let's get these players back as soon as possible and then hopefully they can start contributing as they did earlier in the season too. And something else which is really good that the club is marking at the weekend is uh, the 10th anniversary of the radio station which we're both speaking on. And I know, you know, really nice for you to be able to reflect as well from your, from your drive time days uh, right up to, you know, match commentary and, and ringing the blues on the station now as well. Yeah, look, you know, I think stations like Wickham Sound and, you know, they kind of morphed from, from Wickham Hospital Radio as well, which is where I started out. And Wickham Sound's been a, a large part of my life and, and hugely helpful for, for my ongoing career. And, you know, they're fantastic partners for, for Wickham Wanderers as well. And so, yeah, 10 years is a phenomenal achievement. I remember fondly the application process for them to get their licence, which I, 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 I'd imagine many listeners won't realise just how difficult it is to get an FM licence these days uh, and an online radio licence too. And uh, a month, uh, over three years, a month every year, I think it was, to, to go and do a, a temporary broadcast. And it was brilliant to be able to do uh, some broadcasting on that, not only to contribute to the application, but personally for me, what a wonderful way to gain experience uh, into into the radio industry and journalism. And yeah, hugely invaluable to me and many, many, many other people people as well uh, and then let's not forget the impact it has on the community and the listeners etc and in a time where I think local journalism is, is going through a really bad time you know I think in terms of what gets written and spoken about uh, on other outlets is, is struggling you know we've seen the advertising model in, in print media collapse which has brought its own challenges BBC local radio is seemingly trying to lose its local sort of edge and, and is now appealing to trying to get wider audiences in bigger areas which of course means the focus on on the things that matter to, to people who live in a certain area uh, become less important unless it's a huge news story but you know things local issues and, and local things are big for everybody wherever they live and to have someone like Wickham Sound committed to, to covering that and, and giving people a voice and a platform is absolutely massive so yeah huge congratulations to everyone at Wickham Sound and also a big thank you on behalf of everyone at Wickham Wanderers for everything you guys do because we couldn't do what we do on a match day uh, without you lot because you know the the technical wizardry to get us from the gantry at Adams Park or from away games back to the production company which I think is somewhere near Heathrow and then back out um, synced up um, 99% of the time at least and that's not you guys that's someone else uh, with the pictures that you're seeing or even if it's just the audio you're getting that's going through the studio in, in High Wickham of Wickham Sound um, and without the technical expertise and help of you guys our lives would be a lot lot more difficult um and i even partially understand how it works uh, which itself is a huge uh, huge credit to you lot too but yeah massive thanks and here's to the next 10 years because you know let's go from strength to strength good stuff here here thank you so much for your time enjoy the game on saturday looking forward to being there myself
Good stuff. Fantastic. More from Phil uh, on Saturday, of course, from the gantry. Uh, and uh, you can catch the uh, full interviews with the manager and also with uh, Dale Taylor on uh, Wanderers TV. Online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Part two of the Wickham Wanderers show still to come this evening. We'll hear from manager Matt Bloomfield ahead of the visit of Shrewsbury Town on Saturday. We'll catch up with Gemma Dunn as well, who's a centre-back from Wickham Wanderers Women, uh, almost at the club for a year after signing from Andover in February. But first, uh, you'll know that uh, throughout the season we're celebrating 30 years of the club in the Football League and with uh, big thanks to the Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association been speaking to uh, many, it's been like the football stickers of that, that, that year, I've been collecting uh, members of the squad, we've spoken to many uh, on the show and at the Ex-Players Association dinner uh, very recently, it was fantastic to see some of those who'd uh, travelled from a very long distance as well. I'm very pleased to say, uh, joining us on the show this week is uh, a name that you'll be very familiar with uh, from the wing, uh, from his days there, uh, I'm very pleased to uh, be able to welcome to the show Dave Carroll. Hello, sir. Hi, Colin. How are you doing? Really good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very well, thanks. Very well. Really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. It's great. Thank you so much indeed for your time. And what did it mean to you to be to be at the dinner? Yeah, it was a great evening. A um, lot of reminiscing. Um, obviously, great to see all the all the lads again. Um, don't get together that you know that often. Um, so it's not, you know nice to see a, a few faces from the past, really. Um, and then obviously, um, you know, with Martin being there, you know, uh, saying a lot of reminiscing going on. Because I'm sure, as you mentioned, you don't really get to see some of those guys very often. And, and some of them, obviously Andy Kerr especially, has got, c- came a long way. And uh, obviously it, it must have just sort of clicked back in for you all to be together again. Yeah, that's right. It's like we're, we're sort of still kind of playing. The banter was still the same. Um, and as I say, you know, some of the lads I haven't seen for a long time, you know, and for Andy to come all the way from Canada... Um, you know, it was a, a great effort from him, really, to do that. But um, I think it just showed how sort of close we were as a group, you know, at the time when we were all playing together. And a great opportunity for your sons who were there as well to, to really kind of, <laughs> it was funny, uh, ask questions <laughs> about, about, you know, what, what their dad actually did for the club. Uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, they were sort of obviously not around when I was playing, so um, it was quite nice. You know, obviously, they, they sort of hear stuff from yourself um, and they... Um, Jude's a sort of massive Wickham supporter anyway, so he goes quite regularly. Um, and Frankie's always, you know, is kind of watching videos and things like that. So he's always, you know, he, some of the goals and that on YouTube and things, you know, he'll, he'll sort of um, pull me up on it and go, yeah, I oh, saw this goal at such and such and then, you know, show it. So it, it was nice for them to, let's say, maybe appreciate what I did, um, you know, many years ago. <laughs> I mean, we'll talk to you more about obviously the the season of getting promoted and doing the double. But does that does that feel like thirty years ago, or does it feel you know still quite fresh in your memory? Uh, yeah, I mean, say so, sort of the other night when we were all there, it was kind of like, oh, this was this has only happened a few years ago. You know, to to think it was thirty, um, well, just makes you feel old, doesn't it? Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, great memories of of you know watching you play. And what would you say was your your earliest memory of your time at the club? Um. Well, I sort of. I think I remember sort of quite quite a lot of. I mean, I think I played um, a friendly before I'd actually signed when I was still at Ryslip. Um and I think I played a, a friendly against a. It might have been a sort of Norwegian, Swedish, something like that sort of side. Um, uh, just as a not, not a sort of trial, really. I think Jim Kelman invited me along, and um, I think I put a header over the bar from about a yard. And, uh, you know, you sort of, um, that kind of stuck in my mind and you kind of think, blimey, um, you know, I don't think they'll be looking to take me on after that. But um, no, I, just, I say I sort of remember quite a lot of when I first joined, I got injured quite quite early on in the time when, you know, when I'd actually signed, um, I broke my collarbone after about eight to eight or nine games of the season and I'd started the season quite well and that kind of threw me back a little bit, um, you know, to then... Um, obviously Martin arriving then the move to to um, Adams Park you know so um, you know I've got good memories of, of all the things really that happened you know when I, when I joined the club and there was a great story at the dinner well not great for the person involved but uh, Martin told a great story about how a, a particular player was, was unfortunately sacked because uh, he kept getting into your way, in your way and you were a lot better in that position uh, yeah Steve Abley yeah I just um, I just always remember Jim Kelman used to say you know, when he was running with the ball to sort of get inside and let him, you know, run down the outside and, and get across him. Um, and I say, I think when I, I was still doing that when Martin arrived. And um, like I say, obviously sort of thought, 
I know, I think, why is Dave not doing it? You know, he's much better at it than Steve is. So, um, so yeah, he, he didn't last very long after Martin came in. And did it feel like, you know, it was long before, you know, you were really sort of settling in and, and something special was happening with the, the players around you in, in the side? Yeah, I mean, I think when I joined, um, we were in the conference, sort of, we had a, we had a good run under Jim um, that year. I think we sort of went about 20 games undefeated in the league and I think we sort of, we're sort of pushing a little bit for actual getting promotion, and then we lost. I think we lost in the quarterfinal of the FA Trophy that year, and our season sort of just drifted away. So we had a good nucleus, but probably lads who'd been there a while. And then um, obviously when Martin came in, we suddenly started having a bit of a nucleus of, of younger fellas, um, maybe a little bit more hungrier, had a bit of a point to prove. I think that was mentioned at the dinner the other night. Um, you know, and, it, and we we got lucky in a way that the group came together when it did. Um, everyone got on really well, and you know, it was a great it was a gradual progression. It wasn't a sort of immediate. Um, you know, it took us two, three years, or whatever it was, in the end to to actually get into the football league once Martin had you know uh, taken over. But the style of football you played was both you personally, but also obviously the team was so sort of attacking and exciting going forward as well. Yeah, I mean, we did. Um, I think. The year we we got promotion, I think one of the lads was saying again at the dinner, you know, we were rolling teams over four and five every week. Um, but to be, you know, I think we could sort of mix it a bit. Um, we didn't play well every week. I think that you know we won the league very easily, but we didn't play great every week. But we just had a, mate, a way of winning matches. And um, you know, I so say when we when we played poorly, we we would come away with you know a scrappy one nil win. Um, but when we were good and on our game, we, you know, we were very, very good. Um, say we attacked, you know, scored a lot of goals from lots of different places, um, and we had a lot of match winners. I think in, in the side as well, Colin. You know, so everyone didn't have to be playing well at the same time. It's just that someone would always sort of step up and and score a great goal, or you know, score um, a couple of goals just to win as the game. You know. I think there are so many positions, aren't there, as well, that, that are exciting for fans, but, but obviously yours and, and what you did and you know, what you were able to create and, and goal scored as well, uh, it must be really pleasing for yourself to, to be able to kind of look back and, and, and have such a memorable time at the club. Yeah, that's right. I'll say I, you know, I enjoyed it all. Um, again, you know, I think when, when you're in it, um, people would ask, oh, you know, it must be great to be playing football. You know, and I, I think at the time my take was, well, it's probably after a while. It's a bit like another, you know, any other job really. You just, you know, you turn up every day and, and sort of do it. But when you actually come out of playing, um, that's when you realise how sort of privileged you were to in, uh, to be in that position. Um, you know, and I think if if you went back years, you you maybe do that slightly different. You know, in terms of training and um, extra training, or you know, after the the training sessions finished and things like that. So. Yeah, I suppose, like anything in life, um, Colin, you know, hindsight's a great thing. Of course. I mean, it, it must feel, you know, as I say, so different looking back, as you say, than, than actually being there at the time. But so many, you know, great memories and, and special occasions. Obviously, the FA Trophy wins, the, the the other playoff games at Wembley, you know, and also, obviously, getting promotion, being part of the group that gets promotion to the Football League as well. But yeah, that's right. I mean, like I say, you know, it was a gradual thing, sort of, you know, it took a couple of years. Um, then we got to the trophy final the first time. Um, you know, I think everyone was you kind of under the impression you, you to play at Wembley to do that once in your career, if you like, was would be amazing. Um, to do it, you know, the three times we did, and I think all very differently. I think the first year against Kidderminster, we um, we didn't play particularly well, but we sort of ground the result out. Um, the run corn game, obviously, the year we got we've done the double was. Um, we were in control from the first minute when we scored, um, and it was quite a comfortable game and quite enjoyable to play in because it, you know, it was comfortable, and um, and then obviously that led on to to win the league as well that year. So you know, so there was a gradual bit of succession over a few years, um, uh, and obviously we'd had the disappointment from the year before when um, you know we lost on goal difference to Colchester. And are there any particular goals that really stand out? I'm sure you know the one against Preston at Wembley is, is one that a lot of fans will, will remember for, for a very long time. Yeah, I think um, well, obviously uh, that one. I think there's a few um, not not great goals, but important goals in you know trophy semi-finals and things like that. Um, a, a goal I think I scored um, against Preston in the playoff 
semi final at home um, to sort of put three nil up, you know, over the two legs, um, kind of took the sting out of that game a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I suppose looking back, you know, there was a few good goals amongst all that. Um, but like I say, a, a few important goals. I think was, you know, the main thing. And signing from Rice Lip, as you say, I, I'm sure you could have never imagined that you'd have been there, you know, 600 appearances later. No, not at all. No. Um, yeah, I could ne- never have done that. I mean, I quite, you know, a fairly normal person anyway. Um, so yeah, to to play 600 over so many years again, I think you know, a bit of luck involved in that with um, injuries to start with. Didn't get too many, but certainly early on when I was there, you know, sort of playing uh, 40, 40 to 50 games a year, um, and it wasn't really till later on uh, in, the, in my career that you know I started picking up injuries and missing long periods of games. Um, but um, like I say, to play 600, I've never never said that was possible. Um, you have, you know, over that time we had five or six managers, so you've always got to try and fit into their plans. Um, obviously, some people came in probably didn't really sort of fancy me and and were looking to replace me. And then, lucky enough, you know, um, maybe realised that what they brought in wasn't as good as what they had. So, uh, you know, I was quite lucky on that front as well. And I think it was mentioned at the dinner as well, and I think I've heard many fans over the years say that, you know, you should have played at a much, much higher level, but, but didn't. Was that something that disappointed you, or, or in a way were you really pleased to, you know, to be at the club for such a long time and, and be part of, you know, history, literally? Yeah, I mean, obviously everyone wants to play and, uh, and sort of get to the highest level they possibly can, but um, sort of, I think quite philosophical about it. It didn't, it didn't happen, so, you, you know, you can't worry about things that didn't happen, but uh, obviously it would have been nice to play much higher, but... Um, you know, that, like I say, that, that didn't happen um, for, for one reason or another. But, um, you know, I, I was pleased that I, met, like I say, managed to stay that length of time at Wickham and, and play so many games. Um, it could have been a lot worse and, you know, it could have got rid of me after a few years and that would have been it. But, um, you know, that, that, I say hindsight and think maybe done things differently, if, um, you know, to progress to, to the higher level. It must be so nice as well, though, to be you know associated with the club in, in such a great way, and you know to be admired by the fans, you know, a real fans' favourite, and you know, obviously people like Matt Bloomfield now has, has played for the club for such a long time, but but yourself in, in, in such a sort of a, an elite group, if you like. Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, yeah, it's great. I mean, I think I was, I was sort of telling the story of getting booed off, you know, at Lokes Park. Um, I think first year Martin was there. Um, so you know, it, it was a bit of a like I say. Some people probably liked the way I played, some didn't. Um, but I think in the end, obviously, you know, won them over, and um, you know, every, I think everyone sort of appreciated what I gave gave to the side. And obviously, it's a, it's a, an obvious thing to say, I guess. But you must have seen so many changes at the club during during your time there. How was that? Because because it, it must be so to be such a you know crucial part of the of the team and, and the club, and, and just seeing so many changes as well. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, um, so we had, we had Jim, who was uh, when I first signed, he, he liked quite a lot of phys- you know running things like that. Which is um, sort of training sessions. Obviously, we were, we were part time as well. Um, Martin came along, and then um, we really just played five aside side most of the time and a bit of shooting. So again, that was totally different. Uh, um, and then when Alan Smith came in, again it changed completely again. So we, we were doing things like pattern of play. Um, and uh, you know quite a bit of fitness and stuff like that. So I think we, you know you just have to adapt to, to who comes in. Um, John Gregory came in after him, and again the training sessions were were totally different. Uh, the way we played was totally different. So um, so I, I was quite pleased that kind of adapted to to the ways they wanted you know wanted us to play. And for the majority of the time at the club, I think it, it's such a sort of settled side, wasn't it? And the style of play, and uh, as we touched on, kind of the role that you had as well. Yeah, that's right. I think um, I think when Alan Smith came in, he, he sort of tried to change the way we played, tried to change the way, certainly how I played. Um, I think Nicky Bell was the other sort of winger at the time um, after Steve Guppy had gone, um, and it, you know it was a totally different, totally different way of playing. Um, I think he, he sort of wanted us to cross the ball a lot and um, cross the ball early and certain, you know certain other things. I think mean, after a little while, it kind of you, you try to do that. But it's totally foreign to you, and I think after a little while, I just decided that this is the way I play, and if it's not what you want, you're going to get rid of me. So um, you know, you just <laughs> just went down that route, and 
uh, you know, he went before I did. So that was um, yeah, quite <laughs> quite pleasing. <laughs> Definitely. And what are your memories from from the sort of the transition period from from non league to the, the professional and and the, and the football league? Yeah, again, I think it's, I think Andy uh, Andy Kerr touched on it. You know, we, when we played the first few games, I think the, the Carlisle game. Um, I think the main the word used at the table that night was it was brutal, um, and it was physical. Uh, the pace of it um, was so different to what we've been used to. And, and bear in mind, we kind of cruised through the the non league uh, the year before. So um, you know, when we did get into football league, it was it was really difficult. We also, we'd also um, finished, um, uh, you know, pack, most of us sort of packed in a full-time job, was doing it full-time. So it, was, it took a long time to get actually used to training every day, the speed, the tempo of the games. Um, but once we settled in, I think we adjusted really well, but it did certainly take a little while to, to get used to it. Um, you know, tackles were just seemed harder. Um, and I say people were just running and, you know, it was so much more physical than we'd, we'd ever been used to, really. And overall, how did you look back at your time at the club? Oh, I loved it. Wouldn't, wouldn't have swapped it for anything. Um, you know, say the, the lads that I played with, they're all great. If, if um, you know, uh, someone came into the side and didn't really fit into the, the way we were, um, they, they didn't stay very long. So, you know, there was never... Never a dull moment. It was great, great, great fun um, and very successful. So, you know, um, I wouldn't have swapped it for anything. And what do we find you doing these days? Um, I work for a um, self-storage company called Space Station. Um, so they're based sort of in Slough. I work in the Brentford branch. Um, so, um, yeah, so I do that. I'm assistant manager there. Um, but, yeah, I enjoy it. Again, I work with a good group of people. Uh, the banter's good, so try to get it. <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit like dressing new room humour. So uh, <laughs> no, it's good. Um, yeah, I enjoy it. Then I've been there a few years now, so uh, probably longer than I was at Wickham. But um, yeah, no, that's, that's that's what I'm up to now. But um, again, like I said earlier, if you once you come out of football, it's it's very difficult to you got to adjust. And um, you know, in hindsight, you you know it was it was a great life. So. Um, you know, we do. I think anyone who was involved does miss it. And do you get to go to many uh, games I, yourself I, I, at Ellis Park? Or? I'll go to the odd one. I sort of work every other weekend, so it just depends when um, you know if it falls on a home game or anything. But I'll go occasionally. So due to he's a massive supporter, so he goes to a lot of home games, um, season ticket holder. Um, so you know, I, I don't go to loads, but I go. I just pop in there occasionally and have a have a watch. Well, it's been brilliant to speak to you and hear from you. What would be your message to, to supporters who, who are listening? No, just thank you very much. Um, say, so I really enjoyed my time. Um, obviously, I'll say hello when whenever I'm down there. Um, but um, just, yeah, everyone just get behind Matty and um, hopefully, the, you know, the season will, will turn back around and, and they'll be fighting for promotion. Well, it's been brilliant to speak to you. Really enjoyed watching you as well. And uh, thanks again for your time. Thanks very much. Uh, great, great chat to Dave Carroll on the Wickham Wanderers show and uh, brilliant to uh, commemorate 30 years of the club in the Football League. Online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Final part of the Wickham Wanderers show. Still to come this week, we'll hear from uh, Luke. Hello. I wasn't even rehearsed that bit. Uh, and also more from Matt Bloomfield as well as we look ahead to the visit of Shrewsbury Town. Some say Shrewsbury, don't they? <clears throat> anyway, as a classified... Shrewsbury. F- I- Sorry? Shrewsbury. 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 Shrewsbury <laughs> is better. As the reader of the classified football results... Are you? I am. Oh. I've looked into this, and apparently both are acceptable. Oh, so yeah. it's more like Bissom Bisham, where no. they got very angry in our first year. It's like, no, it's Bissom. This is definitely a, a, a Shrewsbury Shrewsbury. But I believe the locals call it Shrewsbury. Let's go for Shrewsbury then. Although some of them say Shrewsbury. <sighs> but they're wrong. Shrewsbury. More on that later. Uh, Matt Bloomfield, we'll be hearing from him uh, in the press session later on, uh, earlier on uh, today. We'll be hearing from him later on. He spoke to us earlier on. Anyway, uh, more from Wickham Wanderers Women. Fantastic to catch up with uh, Gemma Dunn, who joined the club in February. So it's nearly uh, been uh, 12 months. Uh, and as you'll hear, went on a bit of an unbeaten run when she first joined. Yeah, no, the team has uh, improved massively like from when I started. You know, just the team, like in general, as well as kind of the additions, um, the gap I brought in over the summer in that, I think we're really starting to understand kind of like not just what he expects from us, but what, what we um, expect from ourselves and kind of what our identity like should be and is going forward. 
And how about your own game as well? Because you've played a number of positions, I guess, but predominantly centre back, but you've also, you know, played a bit more in, the, in midfield and, and sort of pushed forward a bit too. Yeah, so in pre-season and starting the start of the season, I tore my hamstring pretty bad. Um, so when I came back in, uh, naturally, like the defenders were doing a boss job. And I think we, um, we had some injuries in midfield at the time. So I kind of slotted in there to kind of fill a role, kind of defensive mid. bit different for me because, you know, I've been sent back for my whole career. But yeah, it's, it's, it's well, um, you know, just happy to help the team in any way I can, really. So you've not scored yet. Is that something you're, you're kind of itching to, to, to achieve or are, you, or are you not too bothered? I'm a bit of a weird one. I personally prefer getting the assists, but I have scored a fair bit throughout my life. Um, so, you know, if it comes, it comes, but I'm, I'm not going to force it. You know, I'll try and do whatever's the best decision for the team. And chatting to some of the other players, they kind of set themselves targets to achieve perhaps in a, in a particular game or across a season. Is that something that you do as well? Yeah, um, I wouldn't really say across the season. Across the season, I'd like to do kind of more like the team goals, you know, going for promotion, you know, uh, doing well in the cups, things like that. But on more of a personal level, it's just game to game, um, you know, trying to win my individual battles. As I am, you know, predominantly a centre-back, you know, I like to always keep clean sheets. Um, if we don't have a clean sheet, then, you know, kind of looking at well, why didn't we, you know, was it down to, you know, just brilliant play from the other team, which sometimes you hold your hands up. Um, but obviously, if we could have uh, affected it, like what can we do better next time to try and, reduce kind of you know the giving the easy goals away and have you noticed yourself a real rise in in standard of, of the team's play as well yeah definitely yeah um teams are playing against yeah everyone seems to have um really been on it through uh pre-season and everything um but we're definitely holding our own very well we've had very good results so far this season and you know just hoping we can push through into the new year so we can finish in a more favorable position than last year and someone which comes across as well, and it's a great advert for the club, and I'm sure you can attach to this as well when you, when you were new yourself, but just the way that the new players really fit in and, and are made to feel so welcome so quickly. Even when I joined, like, it was just, there was a nice buzz about the club. Like, we're su- there's such a lovely bunch of girls, like, we're such a nice, welcoming team. I think it's very easy for you to kind of fit in quite naturally with us, um, which definitely helps, you know, it helps, you know, you don't feel uncomfortable or awkward at training, and you can just kind of focus on playing your game as opposed to, you know, our... How am I going to gel with everyone else? So what would you say are the real strengths of the team? Honestly, I would say probably that is that togetherness. You know, we do like to kind of think of ourselves as like a Wickham family. You know, we train with the under 18s and the under 23s. We all train together on a Tuesday and a Thursday. So we can kind of really, although we train separately, you know, we're all kind of there together. And you can see kind of the roots of progression and everything going through. And yeah, I think that I think that's massive. We all kind of get on quite well with each other, you know, have each other's backs which definitely, you know, helps and translates onto the pitch. So how do you assess how the season's going so far? Because it's strange, isn't it, in a way? It's quite a short season and you've got a break coming up as well. But, but you've done, you know, pretty pretty well in, the, in both league and cup competitions. It's been a good start to the season. Um, you know, as always, there's still a few results that didn't quite go our way, you know, for whatever reason. And that's, you know, what um, we sit with the gaffer and we talk about, you know, trying to assess. So, you know, we can get those results, you know, in the reverse fixtures and so on. Um, but yeah, I'd say... We can always do better, um, but I'd say we're definitely um, set ourselves on the right foot for the remainder. And does it change throughout the season as to particular aspects of, of, the, of the team's game that you, or, or strengths and weaknesses of the team that, that you work on in, in training during the week? Yeah, I think right now one of our kind of main areas for focus is kind of in the attacking positions. I'm just trying to get a bit more creative up there and trying to bury a lot of our chances because we do realise, you know, we, we do some lovely plays sometimes and it's just that, you know, final decision in the final third, you know, whether it's um, going to slot it, you know, past the keeper or make a cross, you know, where to cross it to and those kind of things. I think as a team in all positions, not just at the back, we're all kind of sound, you know, defensively when we're out of possession. So it's just kind of, yeah, the entire team getting a bit more creative and um, yeah, in possession, being more creative. And how do you find playing under under Carl and his coaching team as a whole? It's very clear kind of what he expects from us. You know, is uh, we'll go into each training session, you know, clearly either from the previous week's game, you know, what we need to work on or maybe, you know, what we didn't do against this team, you know, the, the time before and how we can kind of exploit, you know, maybe some things we noticed about them or just, you know, improve our own gameplay. And there's a nice structure to it. You know, we're not just doing this for the sake of doing it. There's always a purpose behind what we do, which obviously helps with, you know, the buy-in of like, you know, the motivation and everything to, to compete well in training. Have there been any games this season that have really stood out as, as you know, particular challenges or, or the ones that you particularly enjoyed or were especially memorable? For me, it would be, it'd actually be, it was my first game back. So I didn't play because it was the FA Cup game against Ascot. 
Um, so the first league game was against Ascot and we lost, I believe it was 3-0, but I could be wrong on that. I can't quite remember. And then two weeks later, we play them in the FA Cup and we beat them. Again, I can't quite remember the score. Um, I think it was 1-0. And that was just absolutely incredible. Like the way the girls battled and, you know, like seeing it from the sideline, how hard everyone worked. It was amazing. Because it must be so nice to get into such a settled run. I think I remember when you first started that you, you, know, you went off quite a few games being unbeaten. Uh, but this season, I guess, feels a bit kind of stop starty and that you've had you know, a number of games off as well. That, that must be quite frustrating. Yeah, it is, especially when, you know, in training we're working on, like, you know, building up to that particular game. And then, so we've had one game called off twice now um, and some other games, you know, we've had to miss for various reasons. It is a bit frustrating, um, particularly, you know, this time of year, you just kind of want to get them in. But, you know, we'll still play the games and we'll just go longer. Um, into May, you know, if we need to. And yeah, hopefully we'll get um, have the opportunity to get a few players back fit as well. So hopefully it's just going to be a positive for us. So as well as obviously on the on the pitch, it must be really nice for you to be able to to contribute in other ways as well. And I know you're doing your doing your day job with your uh, Bucks New Union, your lecturing, but, but really fantastic to work with the, the foundation as well and, and helping coaches also. Yes, yeah, so we've got our new degree um, alongside the Book Wanderers Foundation, which obviously is for football development, coaching and performance. So, yeah, it's really nice to kind of uh, see a different side to the club as well, to be honest, you know, for all the work that they do alongside it and kind of have a small impact into kind of both entities. And I think it's sometimes a bit of a misconception that, you know, you're either a player or a coach and there's so much more that goes on behind the scenes, you know, in the foundation, you know, in their office, they've got all the development officers, you know, having to coordinate all the schedules, going out, you know, doing whether it's the mindful walks, walking football or going into schools, the delivery officers, uh, media team. uh, I've not even listed everyone, but there's so much more that goes on behind the scenes if you do want to be involved in football in some capacity. Great chatting to Gemma, who uh, not only uh, is a footballer, uh, but also a lecturer at Buckinghamshire University and does great work with the foundation as well. Uh, more from Luke in a few moments' time. Obviously, wish uh, Wickham Wanderers women all the best uh, for their upcoming uh, ga- game. At the- Sorry, uh, no one heard that. Good luck! <laughs> Yeah, if you're just tuned in, this is the sort of thing that goes on. Uh, more from Luke in a few moments' time as uh, we uh, prepare to celebrate our 10th anniversary, which is also mentioned uh, with manager Matt Bloomfield, who uh, sat down with uh, Phil a little earlier on today. We get as much to the, into the boys as we can on the screen in the gym, um, the screen in the meeting room, uh, unit meetings, um, just try and feed that into them as much as we can in different ways. So obviously the physical exertions have to be reduced on the training ground because of the uh, need the energy for the matches. So it has been a run that's been spoken about. I'm fully aware of it. You know, I think there's at the start of the run, uh, winless run, there were some really good performances. You know, you're speaking about Peterborough away, Oxford away, or even Bolton at home. There's some really good bits of that performance, although defensively wasn't good enough. You know, recently it's just gone off the ball slightly, but, you know, I've had feedback that Stephen should have been reduced to 10 men in the first half. Lyle's chance against Reading was onside. The Barnsley goal should have been disallowed for a foul. So loads of these little margins have been going against us and we have to make sure we keep working to put those margins in our favour. You know, there's no point feeling sorry for ourselves. We have to... It's probably the reason why I'm so focused on uh, being process-driven and performance-driven because there's so many elements of the result that you aren't in control of. But we have to make sure that performance levels are high, like they were on Tuesday evening, like they have been in the majority of our season. And we have to be focused on that. And as long as we keep doing that, the results will come. And we have to make sure we put those those margins in our favour. When you say feedback, is that from the PGMOL? Yeah, I've had it from the, from the referees that... Um, should have been a sending off in Stevenage during the first half. The offside for La wasn't offside, um, which we knew at the time. The foul on, on Max, uh, there's been a lot discussed about that. Should have been given as a foul. You can't put hands on a goalkeeper, although I know people have their opinions on that. So it's the laws of the game. Um, so yeah, listen, the margins have been against us, but um, we have to focus on ourselves and our performance levels. The game last week against Morecambe wasn't good enough. Tuesday was, was slightly better and we have to keep heading in the right direction. Shrewsbury is an intriguing game for many reasons. Let's first talk about on a personnel basis. Uh, their player of the season and skipper Luke Lee, he's now here. Their young player of the season, Killian Phillips, is now here. Jack Grimm has obviously got past with Shrewsbury as well. So that in itself makes this one an interesting one for both sets of fans. Yeah, and JJ too. Of course, uh, how could I forget? With his experience there. <laughs> he played so. once or twice there. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> I know the manager well. Um, I did my B licence with, with Matt years ago. A great guy, real good person, real good football man, um, knows the game, good person. So I look forward to seeing him. So there's definitely some 
intriguing uh, cross references between the two clubs. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game for us. They had a good result in the FA Cup last week at Notts County, and we know quite a few of their players really well in terms of coming up against them over the years. So it's going to be a tough game for us, and we have to focus them and be ready. They're slightly ahead of us in the league table. It's pretty condensed in there. They have played a couple of games more. Uh, does that add a bit of spice into it as well? Because there is this, you know, if you do get a win on Saturday, the nature of the table is you can move up the table by, by a significant amount of places. I'm not sure if it adds anything on it. For me, it's, it's just making sure that we're the best we can be. Um, I think that over the season, there's always different stories that are attached to games, but essentially it's just us performing in the way we want to play and with the identity we want to play with, with the attacking intent we want to have on display. And that's that's what it's about and, and getting the results. You know, what will be will be over this course of the 46 games. There'll be plenty of ups and downs and you have to try and, whilst it's important to make sure you're in the part of the table you want to be at, you have to make sure that you're you approach the game with the individuality that it deserves. So for me, it's just about making sure we're prepared tactically and physically to, to go and perform on Saturday. And, and if we are, then then we know that we've got a good team. Chairman here, the boss is here, Rob. He's been uh, spending a lot of time with us as well. And I guess with you too. Yeah, we had a meeting yesterday morning. It was lovely to spend some time with him. Um, you know, he's been backwards and forwards quite a bit over the last few months. So it's been great to have that time face to face to discuss various aspects of um, the squad, the club. So yeah, it's great to see him. It's always lovely for the lads to see him as well because he's so enthusiastic he loves loves this place he's put so much into it in terms of time and money so it's great to have Rob over here and um, yeah we um, hope to see him uh, um, more going forward Wickham Sound's 10th birthday it's been celebrated on Saturday at Adams Park a big partner of this football club uh, what would you like to say about their involvement in what we do yeah I think first and foremost thank you to Colin and the guys for their support that they've given this football club over the last 10 years it's great to have um, Wickham Sound on board to, to help and support us and, and to provide Provide that feedback to the local community. So, um, congratulations on your 10 years. Thanks for your support, and we look forward to um, using our relationship further moving forward. Much like the league table in May, the numbers don't lie. Apparently, the episode of the Wickham Wanderers show on Wickham Sound when you were appointed as manager was the most listened to show of last year on the entire station. So, that's good news. Yeah, it's really uh, flattering, isn't it? I think, uh, yeah, everyone knows how much this club means to me uh, and the pride that. I take in and be a manager here um, so um, yeah the excitement I had coming back was huge and I'm, I'm glad that that was, uh, that was received really well and as someone who did the media degree when you were a player you know the value of a good story <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so the value of the good story mate it's the next 10 years top man a great player a great manager and also knows his radio stations as he should <laughs> thank you Gaffer yes 10 years on Saturday being celebrated uh, we mentioned did we mention last week the competition uh, I think so yes we did you have not very long left to enter our competition you have until 12pm uh, on Saturday to enter our competition uh, where you can win one of 13 prizes and fundraise for the station because we are a non-for-profit don't you know no no uh, and yes and uh, also uh, on Saturday uh, we'll, there'll be members of the team uh, at the game as well to uh, to sort of um, mark the occasion uh, well indeed yeah we'll be by the gazebo as always we're starting from 10 o'clock uh, on Saturday with a coffee lounge all the way through through Rob's show the build up to the commentary as well so it's going to be a really good day uh, reminiscing on the last uh, 10 years as well and from our first broadcast as well which if I'm honest I can't remember <laughs> Uh, talking to Dave Carroll, obviously, about how the, the, the club and the, his, the team that he played with developed, but a real sense of pride you know, for, for all of us, really, to have the stations grown as well. Oh, massively, because you know, it's, it's not always been easy. As you know, Dave was saying, you, know, you have your ups and downs, and there has been some very low moments. You know, it's a very stressful thing trying to run a radio station. Um, but yeah, we've, we've made 10 years. We made, obviously, seven years of being on 106.6 FM a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so yeah, I think Saturday's going to be really, really nice. So if the chair boys can win as well, <laughs> that'd be great. That would make the day, wouldn't it? Would really make the day as well, yeah. So you can find out more, as mentioned a little earlier on, uh, on the website, wickhamsound.org.uk. If you want to listen in full to Phil's chat with the manager, uh, Matt Bloomfield, it's part of Pre-Match Drills. Oh, Pre-Match Drills this week. Excellent. If you're Joey Barton, you're not going to like it. I don't care, though. Darcy's interview with Lyle Taylor is brilliant. Go and watch it and go and give Darcy some love because it's great. Fantastic. And also, of course, the post-match reaction from Tuesday. Uh, also on the Wickham Wanderers website, you can hear, if you missed it, uh, Rob Kuig's Q&A as well. Yeah, that's in full in audio version on, ring, on uh, yes, Ringing the Blues and in video form on Wanderers TV as well. Uh, we'll be back at the same time next week. I can uh, confirm as part of our series for uh, celebrating 30 years. Uh, we'll be joined uh, by Simon Garner. Ooh. Very much looking forward to chatting to him. He's got a book out as well, you know. Up the wick.